Hi again, Dane. It's uh, mid-morning here now, and I'm heading to town to send the, uh, the earlier video I made this morning for you and Carlos and Sean and Craig and my son and David and Barry and others. But I'm sending it to you, and I'll leave it in your hands to, uh, to uh, watch it and forward it on. It's a message for today, July 4th, for the leadership meeting, uh, directed to my new friend, Dane. Here we are. Uh, by the creek next to 400 acres of pristine virgin land, about a five minute walk from the school and the village where you see the I meet this morning with all uh, my friends in the kitchen. And this, uh, this creek area, here's my motorcycle and my water jar that I'm going to town to fill up and drop off in my knapsack. Home baked cookies, and here's the water pipeline, like the one at Chico. Only this feeds a couple hundred acres of watermelons. And uh, really quick now, I want to. Oh, this is I want to hike up here another day. I'll take you with my cell phone, and perhaps you could come soon, and we'll hike together. I haven't hiked up here yet, though. It's like a Garden of Eden, they say. I want to hike up this riverbed. <laughs> And uh, it's about 400 acres, and it's all a virgin forest next to this Indian village. And it's owned by the same farmer who owns the, well, the farm there, who's got five stars on the Mike's melons that you'll see on the school. And uh, so we want to hike up here. They say there's falls up there, maybe a half an hour hike up to. And this 400 acres is. Uh, the Lord has his hand on it. It reminds me of the Chico, this, the bridge up there with the water and uh, the dam. And uh, I don't know if I can get over that way now, but I wanted to show you in an abandoned uh, shell of a house and a swimming pool that uh, can be praying. Perhaps we can even get it for a dollar for 99 years, or like Richardson Springs that was acquired for a dollar. <laughs> Chico's metal pipe, this is plastic, water pipeline. As you can see, I took a picture of it just now on your email. You can see the chopped down trees in this sacred area. And uh, for these power lines that's coming through from Spain, Cobras from Spain, the terror group. And here is one of the footpath leading up to Imagine Richardson Springs abandoned in the concrete walkways made of rocks and overgrowth everywhere. The steps, the rock steps. Arturo Pinel, you saw his name written on the school picture here, you'll see the school uh, name for the school name where Ingrid uh, the director gave you a message from the mall. And here is the walkway up into the old homestead of the, the Cecil Cooper, the Richardson homestead down there. With I don't know if you found that yet, the old homestead. Down just past the burn pile. And here's the rock walls, all needing loving attention and landscaping and ground crew. And this concrete area here. All of this can have a rustic gazebo made of all the wood cut down from the power lines and ooh, a swimming pool that has been used in 50 years. Still has water. A little bit of loving care and 
There's your swimming pool, your baptismal tank for the YWAM staff that works here. And in English schools, teaching, they come up here and swim after work. Where do they live? Well, I'd actually like to live here. <laughs> See, this used to be a balcony here, concrete. Used to be a balcony to keep the rain here. You could have your rocking chairs here and the roof above your head. And this is the entrance to the living room. We keep these strong pillars, take the concrete blocks out, and we use rocks and have a rock house made of all the rocks around here. Solid rock house, and we can use a, the, the large hardwood beams for beams, not square. We use a rustic kind of beams. And, Make it modern looking, modern looking inside. And this is a wash basin and with the wash here. This is a closet. This is in a, I think it's a toilet. There's a hole there for the toilet. And there's the shower. And, uh, extend over that way to make the rooms larger for if you have two or three children. And this is the back room. I'm not sure quite what this is used. You can see it's got a floor. And, and uh, it's quite uh, repairable actually, like a, uh, complete home makeover. <laughs> Square thing here for sewage, I suppose. There's a peeler for washing clothes. And this could also have a, a overhang as well, or extend out with other rooms. And, uh, oops, something fell from the sky. And uh, this is the backyard, and this leads into, like, the Garden of Eden. Imagine a Garden of Eden with 400 acres. Not just seven or eight up there behind Richardson Springs in that area with the gas and the the beautiful creek. So hopefully tomorrow, perhaps, we'll hike up there together, and I'll send you a video another time. So I'm giving you a glimpse of, of some land that the Lord has his fingerprint on. And uh, this is the 400 acres. And I mentioned 800 acres. That's, that's another six-hour drive from here in a different sector of the country where it's more uh, cooler, but you can still grow moringa trees, and, and there's no lack of water. That's where the gold is under the ground, of course. And I'm not joking. And, uh, and uh, the sister, the brother of the owner of that land, they're both humble campesinos, farmers. And I mentioned earlier that she married into the, into the, uh, she married uh, an American that was uh, head of the military at one point, another, you know, I guess, he rumored other sectors of intelligence, I suppose, but he was a Christian, and, and uh, he, uh, he died of cancer, and Pocahontas, you'll see another video, she's, uh, uh, in the kitchen there, she actually uh, helped him. She li she lived with the family for a, a year while he was uh, sick and caring for him while his wife was working, I believe, or with the children helping. And uh, anyway, she has that land, and it's a beautiful place for another YWAM refuge, a place of hope and creative last days, uh, abundance and presence of Jesus. And, uh, and this is the road, actually the driveway, up to the house. I originally came up another area over there by the, it looks like a, it's an outhouse, actually. It's never been developed. It's built, it looks like it never got finished. And this is the road, actually, <laughs> with rocks underneath and the, the overgrowth. You can hear the rocks under my feet and the tires of the car. And uh, this is actually the entrance to the estate. That uh, um, perhaps the Lord willing will inspire a network of friends from Chico and abroad to uh, to uh, invest here, and and uh, huh, that's the entrance, you see. And there's the big power lines and chopping down all the trees, and ticking off the natives here. And, but as you know, the money powers always win, and they get. They pay their way politically through to get their way. And so they do things against the United Nations number seven development goals. United Nations 2015 Millennium Development Goals. So I'm sure if you're not aware of them, aware of them, you might look them up and ponder them onto them and apply. I'm sorry, using my British accent. That's I will use that because I have to. That keeps me from the. Ah, from the pain, I suppose, from the, the that the Lord is taking away the pain and replacing it with joy.
Uh, I understand in the city there's papers, that, some papers that a lawyer has who used to be our, our friend. Yes, he's our friend. He's doing his duty, receiving papers from my wife. I had no idea she was sending them, but some kind of papers that has to do with the status of, my, of our marriage. And uh, as I said in the other email, if what I suspect is, in, as per, suspect is in those papers, well, according to um, God's kingdom, they are invalid. And according to the law of the United States and the Bill of Rights, they are invalid. And I trust that uh, the Holy Spirit and humility in us all will, will uh, see that the declarations are uh, apologized for and revoked. And uh, perhaps my wife will get a, everyone in YWAM, the leadership and you, a message and a link to the last video I showed you and, and that uh, their declarations were a grave mistake, a grave error and uh, come to the table of quiet around the blood under the covering of Jesus and his great sacrifice and, and the history of Mary Magdalene, of course. Matthew 25, 31 through 46, and Matthew 26, 1 through 16. Oh, my shoelace. Mark 14, 1 through 11, and John 11, 1 through 2. That leads us to John 8, 1 through 11. And that led to what happened in Luke 7, 36 through 50, and chapter 8, 1 through 3. And the second time the lady poured her nard perfume on Jesus' feet was six days before he died, before the Passover, before the Pascha which is in John chapter 12, 1 through 11. And of course, uh, we already mentioned the last time, which was Mark 14, 1 through 11, the last time she poured nard on his head. And, uh, and when Jesus sent the two angels to sit where his nard-smelling feet lay in the tomb in memory of her, an example for us to follow. Always give remembrance of her when we preach the gospel. Uh, cross, redemption, crucifixion, redemp uh, sanctification, justification, and intimacy with God, because that's what it's all about. Okay, I'm off to the city now, friend. Catch you on the rebound.